Okay. You see that? Yep. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, um, I'm Nadia, and I'd like to thank you all for zooming in tonight. Um, tonight we'll be looking at the stages of development from a Montessori perspective, better known as the planes of development. So we will look at the planes um, one and two in detail, and then we'll briefly touch on planes three and four. So what are the planes of development? Um, the Plains of Development is a holistic framework upon which Maria Montessori built her vision of development psychology. This theory encompasses human development from birth until maturity, which Montessori believed is not until the age of 24. Montessori education encourages the development of the child as a whole. And Maria Montessori once said, children are on a pathway, on a pathway to develop academically, spiritually, morally, and emotionally. So what does this mean? So the theory of the planes of development recognizes this path and supports the child's journey on it. The journey towards becoming mature, developing good moral characteristics, and to have a love for learning. Montessori education does not just support academic development, it also supports human development. So Dr. Montessori was careful not to represent human development as a relentless step-by-step -step upward progression from birth and to towards adulthood. Um, when a child is born, they come into the world full of promise and potential. We have no way of knowing what the child's potential is and to what extent they will be realized. So all that we as parents and educators can do is to help the child along their journey of constructing themselves. So how do we do this as parents and educators? How do we help our children develop? We do it by recognizing that human development is not perfectly linear. And by linear, I mean that every year you learn more and more, building on what you have learned in the past until you reach maturity. So Montessori recognized that human development is definitely not linear. In fact, it occurs in cycles and there are peaks and valleys to the cycle. So let's take a look at the graph showing the planes of development. So each plane spans approximately six years. The horizontal line is the line of life and the oblique lines that form the triangles are the lines of progression and regression. The first phase of each cycle opens up to a set of particular experiences and consequently to the related learning matter and achievements. The second half consolidates these achievements in preparation for the next cycle. So for example, um, the opening phase of infancy is from birth to three, and the closing phase is from three to six. So a four-year-old child is in the closing phase of, in of infancy. Uh, you could look at it as the consolidation period before the child enters into the second plane. So understanding the graph in more detail, we can see that there are phases of formation and phases of development. So between the ages of zero to six, we have the formation of an individual. During these six years, the creation of the psychic being is coming together as an individual through the process of self-construction. Between the ages of six and 12, we have the development of the child. In this phase, the child takes what they have absorbed in the first plane and uses it to develop themselves as part of society around them and the world um, as a whole. So formation of a socially conscious individual will occur between the ages of 12 and 18. During these six years, the child is searching for their place in society. This is the time when we witness mood swings and issues with identity, and they are more so focused on fitting in. Um, and then onto the next plane, the young adult is now progressing from the formation of a socially conscious individual to the development of the socially conscious in individual, which occurs between the ages of 18 to 24. During this plane, the young adult's role is more that of fulfilling one's place and role in society.
Um, so I'll just get you to read this, um, this quote. Um, development is a series of rebirths. There comes a time when one psychic personality ends and another begins. The first of these periods goes from birth to six years of age and the child's mentality basically remains the same. It includes two subphases from birth to three years and three to six years. In the first of these, the child has a type of mind that adults cannot exert upon to influence. In the second subphase, which is three to six, they are still mentally the same, but the child becomes susceptible to adult influence and their personality undergoes great changes. And this is taken from the absorbent mind. So what does this quote um, mean? So referring back to uh, the planes of development, Montessori referred to these planes as the series of rebirths. She noted that the planes correspond to physical growth and changes. Thus, the development is the series of rebirths. So one psychic personality ends and another will begin. Each plane of development provides the optimal time for learning in specific areas. Within these stages, the development of the child is quite intense at the beginning, then it consolidates, and finally it trickles into the mix. So referring back to the graph, the first and the third planes, which are infancy and adolescence, are periods of intense creation, whereas the second and the fourth planes, um, childhood and maturity, are the periods of calm and consolidation. Um, so I guess you can say that these planes are cyclical. They each, so each plane is characterized by a period of construction followed by a period of consolidation. B, they are sequential. Um, each plane builds upon the foundation laid by the previous one. And C, they are very distinct. So each plane of development provides the optimal time for learning in a specific area the best time to learn a skill completely so that it forms part of a human being. Learning skills outside of these optimal times is less effective and more difficult for the child to learn um, later. Um, so can you see sort of how these four planes are interdependent? Successful work in one plane is dependent upon successful work in the prior planes. So as, ed as educators, schools, and parents alike, it is critical that we educate in complete harmony within these planes of development. Let's take a look at the first plane. The first plane of development is the period from birth to approximately age six. During the stage, children are sensory explorers learning to become functionally independent on the, on the immediate environment and community. Children at this stage construct their own intellect by absorbing every aspect of their environment, language, and culture. When we looked at the planes of development graph earlier, we looked at the formation and the developmental phases. So a child between the ages of zero to six is in the formation phase. During these six years, the creation of the psychic, is, psychic being is coming together as an individual through the process of self-construction. This, pl this plane is of fundamental importance for the formation of the individual. During this period, Montessori observed that the child undergoes striking physical, psychological development. And in this plane, the child is seen as a concrete sensorial explorer and learner engaged in the developmental work of psychological self-construction and building functional independence. So it's a really important um, plane between zero to six. Montessori introduced several concepts to explain this work, including the absorbent mind, sensitive periods, and normalization. During the first plane of development, a child has unique natural abilities to learn unconsciously. The natural motivation to learn creates a certain enthusiasm within the child that if prompted will remain a part of the individual throughout life. So more learning takes place at this stage of life than at any other. Children begin to acquire language, they develop cognitive and motor skills. During this period, children undergo a series, a series of sensitive periods. This is a time of innate learning where children develop language skills, the urge to sit up, to crawl, to walk. And during the sensitive period, there are several aspects of development. 
simultaneously occurring, such as uh, movement, language, order, music, grace and courtesy, refinement of senses, reading and writing. Between the ages um, zero to three, children are, sorry. children are sensorial explorers. Here, children are in the process of creating themselves. They have to create their language. They have to create their, and coordinate their movement. Before the age of six, a child creates himself as an individual. During the first plane of development, the child has many needs. The, needs, um, the child needs love, acceptance, respect and understanding, warmth and protection. The child also has a need for security, for order, for freedom and independence. At this time, a prepared environment should be, be, should be provided to allow the child to explore and experience purposeful activities with an intelligent purpose. Dr. Montessori said, the first plane of development is the second embryonic life. So this is not in the physical sense, but a spiritual life where you embrace your humanity. The child's first birth is a physical and a second, the second birth is metaphysical, so mind and matter. So in totality, children have the opportunity to engage themselves in their own development so that they can develop their language, they can coordinate their movement, they can mature their personality, they can grow in their humanity, build their imagination and develop good moral character. So as discussed previously, the first six years of life are marked by tremendous physical and psychological growth, exploration and development. This is a period of infancy and the unconscious period of development. Physically, the body develops from head to toe. The child has a fragile immune system and is susceptible to illness. Psychologically, the child is a concrete thinker, taking, everything, taking in everything from around them. Montessori coined this plane as the time of the absorbent mind. She believed that more learning takes place at this stage of life than any other. Children begin to acquire language, they develop cognitive and motor skills, and they begin to imitate the adults and develop expectations of the world around them. This plane, which consists of the absorbent mind, is further divided into two subplanes. From birth to three, the unconscious absorbent mind, which Maria Montessori refers to as the conscious creator. And then from three to six, we have the conscious absorbent mind, which Montessori refers to as the conscious worker. Let's give you a minute to read that. Now I've got another quote, it's quite a long one, and I'll just give you some time to read this quote and then we can talk about it. So it refers to the absorbent mind as a whole and then it's broken down between the conscious and the unconscious. Okay, so we'll just talk about this quote um, and what, what it means. So in order, sorry, in order to accomplish this remarkable self-construction, the child possesses a type of mind vastly different from our own. Montessori called this type of mind the absorbent mind. Absorbent mind, why? Because you know, the child effortlessly takes in or absorbs sensory information and experiences from the environment. It was this quality that particularly captivated Dr. Montessori. It seemed miraculous to, you that very, to her that very young children living simply 
and joyously could learn and orient themselves to complex systems without any teaching. All right, so looking at the next three slides, we're going to talk about the absorbent mind, and then we'll talk about the unconscious absorbent mind and the conscious absorbent mind. So what is the absorbent mind? The absorbent mind is literally like a sponge. It absorbs and takes in anything and everything around it, just like a sponge. It cannot discriminate the quality of water it absorbs, neither can the young developing mind of a child. So a really beautiful um, uh, uh, sort of way Montessori talks about um, the absorbent mind is that of a painter and a photographer. She, um, the young child's mind is like a camera. It takes in a scene as it is without choosing the elements or discriminating, also unable to make any changes. Whereas the adult mind is like that of a painter. He can choose the elements and features of the scene that he wishes to paint and will only take in those aspects and disregard what he does not feel unnecessary. So Montessori's understanding of the power of the absorbent mind in the first six years of life is a wonderful gift. As educators and parents, it is our duty to recognize that the child's mind is very different from our own and find ways to help the child to use this amazing absorbent mind to his or her advantage. Now let's look at the unconscious absorbent mind. The infant from zero to three is identified by Montessori as a spiritual embryo. This period between zero to three is a stage when the child physically needs someone else. The child cannot move, stand or eat on their own. But deep inside the child has the power of the person they will become, an active spiritual dynamic. This is one of basic terms of Montessori philosophy. So during this stage, the child absorbed information unconsciously or unknowingly. The child learns to sit, stand, walk, speak without a conscious effort. An infant will look at everything intently without discrimination or choice. A child during this period tends to mimic what they see. The unconscious powers do not have aims or purposes. So for example, um, the infant uh, who is lying on their back is strengthening their muscles and spine, but they're not aware of their purpose. He's just simply, um, he just acts simply in keeping within the laws of nature. As a child's physical body becomes more defined, he learns unconsciously and his mind easily absorbs his environment. He becomes more sensitive to things adults take for granted and learning for him is easy and fast. Montessori discovered physical aspects of learning to walk and learning to talk are closely intertwined. In fact, a distinctive feature of the Montessori approach is the importance given to the role of movement in the construction of the intellect. For example, um, the love of order and routine peaks at about two when the need to orient themselves in the world is most intense. The toddler's tantrum is interpreted by Montessori educators as a response to something perceived to be out of place or um, familiar routine has been disrupted. So in other words, an attack on the sensitive period for order. To toddler tantrums illustrate just how intensely young children experience a sensitive period when it is at its peak. So during this most important period of life, the child is not conscious of learning, but creates the person they are to become. The child remembers little of this time, and yet what happens during these early years becomes part of their forever. And now we're moving to the conscious absorber mind. So um, this disposition changes during the ages between three to six, where Montessori observed new unique tendencies while babies and toddlers effortlessly and unconsciously absorb impressions from the environment, at about age three, this changes. And the child is learning to use a conscious absorbent mind. So making conscious something that his unconscious mind absorbed earlier. So she called this, the child, um, Montessori called the child of this period, the conscious worker, driven to repeat and perfect activities through the hand, which help build the personality. There's an awakening in the subplane, and with it comes the need to be in an environment with other children. So the child is able to interact with his environment consciously and deliberately. He 
he begins to develop self-mastery and self-control. He's able to put use the abilities he has constructing unconsciously. He's aware of his work and his work is joyful, purposeful activity, and he's always bu busy. His hand is the, is the instrument of his mind and he's busy perfecting and enriching the powers created in the first years of life. So the child moves from being dependent on adults to wanting to become independent. The young child who just yesterday allowed us to choose his clothes and dress him now boldly states, I can do it myself. So moving on from the absorbent mind, we'll just take a look at one of Maria Montessori's, um, another one of her phenomenal discoveries, the sensitive periods. So if we refer to the graph, and take note of the sensitive periods during each plane of development. Um, I'll just quickly uh, recap what a sensitive period is. So um, this is these are windows, um, windows of time when the young child is particularly drawn towards a certain aspect of development. The sensitive periods help focus the young child's constructive energies to what will most aid their development at that particular time. According to Montessori, the most important sensitive period occurs between birth and age six. Sensitive period can last days, months, or even years and stop just as suddenly as they begin. So the learning done during the sensitive period is not complete, nor will the child have reached the level of abstraction. However, the foundational building blocks were laid for further learning to occur as the child grows older. So when a solid foundation is lacking, children will experience learning difficulties later in life. So it is imperative that we are able to recognize and support these periods. And with that being said, um, that brings us to the end of the first plane of development. Let's just look at the second plane. So the second plane is that of development. So we spoke about the formation and the development. So the second plane is that of development of the individual, and this occurs between the age of six and 12. In the second plane, um, between the age of six and 12, children enter into society. They become aware of themselves and what it takes to live and work with other people. They use the power of the imagination to understand the larger world around them. There is a marked change from the period that went before it. So the child takes what they have absorbed in the first plane and uses it to develop themselves as part of the society around them and the world as a whole. In this second plane of development, um, uh, or the plane of childhood between the ages of zero to 12 is marked as a period of relative calm and peace within the child. At this time, children are reasoning explorers. In the first plane, human functions were created and integrated, enriched and perfected. Then during the second plane, they can both expand both psychologically and physically. Montessori observed the mental powers of, the, of a six-year-old child as such that they can not only expand but soar to new heights as the abstract plane of the human mind is organized. The absorbent mind at this phase begins to make way for a different kind of learning, one based on reasoning, um, abstraction, and imagination. So children in this plane increasingly exercise the imagination, they ask questions, uh, research, and problem solve in order to explore the wider world. And the sensitive periods for a child in this plane include heightened interest in being part of a group, um, a fascination of different fields of knowledge, and urge to investigate ethics and morality. They have a strong sense of justice and perceive fairness and following rules becomes very important to them. So children in this plane are able to handle abstract concepts, including mathematical and scientific concepts. So they begin to move away from the concrete material they once used in the children's house. The child can no longer effortlessly absorb information in their environment. They must, know, now make, they must now make a conscious effort to learn new material. Now the child learns in the same manner as an adult, one, with one important exception, the child is still driven by his very nature to learn and develop. There is an unconscious desire or sensitivity to learn and grow because the child is not yet complete, 
so it enters into the second plane of development. So during the second plane, all of the ideas introduced can be explored and varied, adding to the complexity of the personality and building up what the child understands about his world and his place in it. The child wants to know his own rationale, his judgment. He wants to make independent decisions. The child's absorbent mind gradually changes to his reasoning mind. And um, in turn, his goals change from functional independence to intellectual independence. So as the child begins to think and rationalize more independently, he also wants more independence from his family and he wants to venture out past the security of his family. His friends become an important part of his life as he begins to find identity separate from his family. A child between the age of six and 12 has an intellectual curiosity with an attraction to a wider and more abstract environment for learning. The child moves from the what is it to how come or why. They're becoming more, more, um, more curious. So the three great sensitivities of the second plane are imagination, culture, and morality. The child's great capacity for the use of imagination is tapped to help the child visualize and understand the things they cannot see or touch. Things too vast, too far, and too small. The child wants to know about his world and his place within it and can appreciate the interconnectedness of all things and people. At this point, they thirst for the story of the universe, the story of life, the story of people, the story of numbers, and the story of communication. Intellectual and moral independence are desired now, not just what is right and wrong, but also why it is so is developing. Mistakes will be made to assist. And for us to assist with this, there is a great attraction to working in groups as well as being with and working with peers. The sensitivity for acquisition of culture is shown as an interest in everything. So this age is known as the bridge to abstraction or the form transformation from concrete to abstract thinking. Intellectual independence is the main desire now and he uses, you know, I can think it myself phrase. This plane is an exciting one, one of a smooth and uniform development what I believe um, to be the epitome of childhood. Um, okay, so that will bring us to the um, end of the second plane. We're just going to briefly touch on the last two planes so that we've covered all the stages of development you know, following the Montessori philosophy. So in the third plane of uh, development is a formation formation of the socially conscious individual between the ages of 12 and 18. So Montessori saw the third plane as a time of rebirth and referred to adolescents as social newborns. We know that adolescents want to be heard and have real influence to identify themselves as separate and important contributors unique from their parents to have ownership over their actions and their communities. Because they are spending so much time in an unsure state, we need to allow them um, time alone. This new self-awareness is exhausting and coupled with brain and body growth means that they need more sleep than they did when they were younger. So during these six years, the child is searching for their place in society. This is the time when we witness mood swings and issues with identity as they are focused on fitting in. Montessori recognizes adolescents as a time when the child enters a state of adulthood physically, psychologically, socially, and morally. Physical maturation is attained through puberty, and this rapid period of growth can be accompanied um, by fragility. So Montessori made it comparable to the first three years of life when there is a relatively similar burst of physical growth. They can be self-absorbed, they need adequate food and sleep to sustain rapid growth, and they need time to just be. Um, Learning and, learning and mental development may even slow down as more time is spent on their own with friends and eating and sleeping. It is the end of childhood and the formation of the adult begins. They are no longer children and they are not yet adults. So what this means is at the time when we would expect an increase in responsibility, capability, academic performance, 
and independence, the adolescence appears to regress and is less able to do what society expects of them. So um, consider to um, the typical educational setting for high school, hundreds of students challenging classes with a great deal of homework, a different teacher for every subject, pressure to get good grades and increased exposure to negative influences. You know, although Dr. Montessori um, work with adolescents is not fully recognized as a work with children in the first and second plane, her answer for educational environment would be to aid the life of the young child. So Montessori sought to prepare the adol adolescent for adult life, both social, socially and economically in a safe, protected environment. She proposed, um, she proposed that we, so sorry, wrong slide. Um, this is a quote that I, that I just wrote down. So Montessori proposed that we quote, abandon the schoolroom and open the gates of life, creating a center for work and study in a quiet countryside where the whole of daily life would revolve around the changing needs for the adolescents. And that was taken from Montessori Peace and Education. So participating in real life experiences with real life consequences leads the young person to value life. The adolescent is prepared for a healthy, confident entry into the adult society. The young person must feel that they can contribute in a meaningful way to the community and see that value reflected back upon themselves. And um, I just found this interesting statistic that I thought I'd just put up there to share with you. If you have a read of that before we move on to the last plane of development. Okay, so now moving on to the last plane. Development of the socially conscious individual. This plane spans from 18 to 24 years of age. The fourth plane of development is characterized by the young adult working on their spiritual self or constructing a higher level of self-understanding. This stage is marked by a strong desire for financial independence. And you will notice that I can get it myself mentality. During this time, the adult discovers their place within the world and asks themselves, what do I have to give to the world? So this stage is more that of fulfilling one's space and role in society. Progressing from the previous plane, educational and life experiences have along the way provided a general purpose. The fourth plane is known as the plane of maturity or adulthood. More stable than the third plane, it is now possible for the young adult to pursue studies that interest them in the context of making a difference in the world. The young adult now enters the fourth plane of development. Society considers them to be an adult in many ways. They have left behind childhood and adolescence and what is what Montessori refers to as a formed person. Following the tremendous changes and creations in the third plane, the fourth plane is another stable period of development and consolidation of the creations formed in adolescence. So the young child's, uh, the young adult success now depends on now how they have developed their potential until this point. If the preceding levels of independence have been realized, they will be able to make their own choice of action and they will be aware of their own possibilities and responsibilities. Just something that um, I thought I'd share as I was researching and I came to understand that Montessori's vision for the first and the second planes was thoroughly developed and has been implemented all over the world. We have some of her writings about the third plane and many people have been developing um, and working on Montessori environments for adolescents. But about the fourth plane, very little is written. So that's still being researched. I found this interpretation of the four planes and thought I'd just share it with you. Um, I like the fact that it illustrates very simply the growth and the voice of the child, you know, by just reading that it's really a really simple way of understanding the planes. 
So at each plane of development, a particular level of independence is attained. In the first plane, the child strives for functional independence. So Dr. Montessori told the story of a young child who actually said to his teacher, help me to do it myself. At the second plane, this changes to help me think for myself as the child um, works towards intellectual independence. And at the third plane, the adolescent moves towards a social and emotional um, independence. And the words they're using is, help me to think with you. And then when we get to the fourth plane, early adulthood, the young child strives for economic, moral, and spiritual independence. And the words they use is, how can I help you? So as you can see from the graph, Montessori refers to the formation of man during the first six years of life. She believed the formation of intelligence of human personality is actually formed in this phase. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's amazing to think that a child's personality has already been developed by the age of six. So you can just see how fundamental the first six years of a child's life are. A metaphor that Montessori refers to uh, for the planes of development is that of metamorphosis. Um, if we think of the appearance needs and life of a caterpillar, we see a completely different creature than the butterfly it will later become. The caterpillar crawls along eating leaves. The butterfly flies from flower to flower in search of nectar. We cannot aid the caterpillar by providing a garden full of flowers, nor will the butterfly benefit from the green leaves. The child too is quite different at each stage of development and needs very different conditions in order to thrive. There are identifiable mental and physical characteristics at each plane, and the child's environment must change to respond to those characteristics. Each plane has specific developmental objectives, and the child develops certain sensitivities or abilities at each plane in order to meet these objectives. Although each plane has a unique characteristic and needs, each plane depends upon the previous one. And that's what we've been looking at all the time, just how important the previous plane is for the, for the future development. So um, just as a gum nut sprouts and grows roots, which grow and support the matter, massive gum tree, so does the adult life have roots in the first plane. If the child has not satisfied all of his needs at one stage and moves to the next with a deficit, he will move with a deficit to the next stage. This deficit cannot be made up naturally but only with a conscious effort using the characteristics of that plane. Oh, I leave you tonight with this conclusion. As adults, parents and educators, we must do all that we can to provide an environment that meets the needs and supports the, the developing person. The adult should view the transition from one plane to the next as a positive time and should help the child to do so. This will lead to a much smoother and easier transition. Most importantly, we must be aware of these planes and development so that we can support them and not out of ignorance impede development. To know what planes and their needs are, we need to study development and observe the children in our environment. So as Dr. Montessori said in The Secret of Childhood, if we are to help life, we have to first of all study it. And thank you for listening. So we wanted to, um, Nadi, did you, we wanted to open open it up to questions. Yep. Um, Yvette's asked, um, can you get the four planes of development graph anywhere? Yeah, they, um, they're all over the, so Yvette, if you just Google um, planes of development, Montessori planes of development, there are many different um, graphs that you'll find online. Um, there's also, there'll also be a written blog coming out about each of the stages of development in the coming weeks on the I Am Montessori website. Um, did anybody else have any questions? I know that, I know um, Shinta's, uh, Shinta's on, but I'm not sure of everyone else. And if anybody's got any questions, we really focus on the zero to six stages. But for those who have multiple siblings, it's really good to understand the older stages of development as well so that you can see how they play hand in hand and how supporting the younger stage of development supports them uh, when they hit the next um, development hurdles as well.
Um, all right, nobody else has got any questions. Um, well, I'd like to say thank you, um, Nadia, for tonight's session. And also, uh, th this has been recorded, so it will be available um, for anybody who would like to revisit the information after. Um, and our next month webinar will be with a sleep consultant um, talking about sleep um, from a Montessori perspective, um, as well as how to support um, parents and, and people in your life who may be having children who are struggling with sleep. Okay, thanks everyone for being a part of it. Thank you.